Hey guys, here's a basic tutorial for composers on how to solve EQ problems. Composers must wear many hats, composition, arranging, music prep, contracting, and sometimes recording, and many times mixing. It's tough to be a master of all of them at the same time, even at different times. So this tutorial is primarily for composers. Some composers are fortunate enough to have a mix engineer, but if you don't, it's a real benefit to know how to solve EQ problems that might cause trouble either in the final dub of a film, on a soundtrack CD, or a demo track. The first thing is to know what you're hearing. Many people want to know which are the best monitors. The best monitors don't exist, but what does exist are the best monitors for you, and they depend on your ears and your room. High quality monitors are more accurate in representing the differences between two frequencies that are very close together, for example. If you're using an EQ to determine the difference between, say, 1.5K and 1.8K, you're going to hear the difference on great monitors. However, they can also handle an excess of energy in any given frequency range way too elegantly. For example, if you have an excess of the low 100s in your mix, it'll simply sound nice and warm on a high quality monitor. Unless you're listening to a good reference track, you may not realize the excess. Lower quality speakers cannot handle excesses of frequencies and they respond poorly. So they tend to be more revealing of EQ problems. The best solution is to have multiple monitoring systems. Monitors, of course, maybe two sets if it's possible, some good ones and some cheap ones. Headphones, definitely, laptop, car stereo, etc. Even listen to it on a phone. The audio term to equalize literally means to distribute evenly or uniformly all frequencies in a sound source relative to the normal spectral balance of that sound source. This simply means make a trumpet sound like a trumpet. Corrective EQ is balancing a sound source so that it sounds like the sound should and or so an overabundance of a certain frequency or frequencies does not ruin your mix. References are highly recommended. For example, find a trumpet recording that you like and try to match it. It's a great way to establish what a balanced tone sounds like on your monitors. Subtractive EQ is the best method most of the time. That means finding the frequency with too much energy and reducing it rather than raising the frequencies you feel are missing. If you feel a track lacks clarity or high frequency, chances are there's too much energy in the low or mid frequencies. Always keep in mind, subtracting one frequency will boost others as a result after gain compensation. Therefore, you may create new problems while solving for one. For example, a 6 dB reduction at 130 Hz might sound similar to boosting a high and low shelf by 6 dB on either side of 130 Hz after gain compensation. So I invite you to think about EQ both ways. Gain compensation is adjusting the volume of a sound source after equalization or dynamics processing. Reducing frequencies of a sound source will reduce its overall volume. So gain is applied after equalization in order to restore the track's apparent volume. This is the best way to audition EQ changes. Some plug-in EQs have an automatic gain compensation feature. In order to accurately compare the before and after EQ, make sure the volumes of both sound equal to your ears. So first step, choose an EQ plugin that you like the most. It should be an EQ with the least amount of color for accuracy. Use that as your default go-to EQ. Second, do not automatically add EQ to every track or stem. Use your ears. Go through each track of your session. If you hear what sounds like a problem, there probably is. Then add your EQ. Don't spend too much time on individual tracks. You'll likely make more adjustments once you hear the entire mix. For this example, I'm going to choose this electric bass. There are so many different ways to shape an electric bass, but for this example, I'll maintain a relatively average approach. Three, find the problem frequency. Now this is the most difficult task for many people to grasp. And it's the most difficult for me to explain. Once you listen to a track, and if you know there's something wrong, you hear it in your mind's ear. Try focusing on that particular frequency in your mind first.
Then when you're ready, go to your EQ and raise a point and quickly try to match it. I hear some muddiness in the low to mid frequencies. Once you've found it, then quickly stop. This is super important because you don't want to train your ears that an increase in this frequency is okay. An analogy might be, say you're reading a flyer that's printed on red paper, bright red paper, and you're reading all this information for at least a minute or so. Then you look away and everything appears green. So you need to reset your ears like you do your eyes. I call it white balancing. You need to do that before you make any further EQ decisions. So give your ears a small break and then perhaps return to your reference track to get yourself centered. So now return to your track and return to your EQ. Set the EQ flat. Now play the track. Then gradually lower the offending frequency that one that you found until it sounds good. With gain compensation turned on, bypass the EQ to hear the difference. Sometimes automatic gain compensation does not fully compensate for every EQ adjustment, so I'm gonna help it out a little bit. Then try different widths of the reduction, also known as the Q. Narrow cues will over highlight the neighboring frequencies, so be careful for that. Wide EQs will take too much energy from that entire area, so find a good spot in between. I'm sure this is basic information for many composers and nothing new, but I hope it's helped some. I'll have more details in the next video, including specific frequencies to keep in mind for certain problems.